This time we're working in M22, the set of 2x2 two two matrices. That's our vector space. And I'm trying to figure out whether or not this set S, which consists of these vectors A, B, and C that are in M22, are whether that set is linearly independent, whether these vectors are linearly independent. So we go back to our our definition of linear independence and test this equation. So I want to see whether C1 times A, the vector A, so that's 2, 0, negative 3, 1, plus C2 times the vector B, plus C3 times the vector C, is equal to the zero vector, if, if that's equal to the zero vector, then does that guarantee that C1, C2, and C3 are all equal to zero simultaneously? So now what you have to do is come up with a system of equations based on this. It's fairly easy to do that um, because I'm just going to take, I'm going to find four equations. The first one using the linear combinations that add up to zero in the entry one one. So if you follow me, two C one minus four C two minus eight C three has to equal zero, right? So two C one minus four C three no say C two C two minus eight C three let's move this guy over has to equal zero and so in a similar way we can just do that to all these other entries so let's look at this guy this guy has to be zero and so zero times c1 which is a zero minus one times c2 minus three times c3 that must be equal to zero. And then we're going to do the others very quickly because you can see what we're doing. Um, we'll do this one next. So I have a negative 3C1 plus 0C2 minus 6C3 must equal zero. And then finally, for this guy, it's just c1 plus 5c2 plus 17c3 has to equal 0. And you guessed it, what we're going to do is convert this into a an augmented matrix. My system of equations here I got from the definition of linear independence. And so it'd be fun if we did it in this sort of shocking purple. I think that's kind of fun. So, oh no, it seems to be the same purple. That's all right. Um, here's what we get. We get uh, two, a negative four, a negative eight, augmented zero. We get zero, negative one, negative three, zero. A negative three zero negative six zero one five seventeen and zero. Now here's the fun part. I have already uh, this two has a little dot in front of it, and that's sort of bothering me. Oh look at that. Okay, I got that. Um, good. Let's repair that. All right, we're good. Now watch. I've already programmed this into my calculator, and so if you go now, I've I've called it D. All right, so in my calculator, for for various reasons, I've called it D, and you're going to see why that's true. So I put that in my calculator. Let's check it. There it is. Augmented matrix. That's a coefficient matrix. And <clears throat> all I have to do is, it's almost too easy, hit row reduced echelon form of D. Remember, I put it in as D for reasons that will 
become clear in a few minutes. And so this is why I get back as my row reduced echelon form of that matrix D. I get back 1, 0, 2, 0, 0, 1, 3, 0. And then the final two rows are all 0 rows. All right, now what does that mean? That means that I have some information about C1, C2, and C3. Right? I can go ahead and write that out. What information do I have? Well, I know that C1 plus 2C3 has to equal 0. And I know that C2 plus 3C3 has to equal 0. All right, well, what does that give me? That gives me that C1 has to equal negative 2C3. C2 is equal to negative 3C3. And then if I let C3 be T, that gives me C1 equals a negative 2T. C2 equals a negative 3T. C3 equals T. Now you know right here that, that S is, so therefore, S is not linearly independent, but linearly dependent. Why? Because I got back an answer other than exactly C equals 0. I mean C1 equals 0, C2 equals 0, C3 equals 0. So it's not true that the only scalars that will send this collection of vectors to the 0 vector in linear combination are all, z all the 0 scalars. Instead, there are an infinite number of scalars that will do that, as as you can see by this equation, I mean this uh, this parametric solution. So, now just for fun, and you could say because not all C, not all the constants are equal to zero, right? That's why it's linearly dependent. So, just for fun, let's let's let t be some number now. So this is just the just for fun line, right? So what if t equals negative one? Well, if t equals negative 1, what do we know about c1? Well, c1 equals a positive 2, right? c2 equals a positive 3, and c3 equals a negative 1. Now, what does that mean in terms of our original linear independence definition equation we had way up here? The first thing we were writing. Well, it means that that 2a, because remember uh, from that equation, c1 was matched with a, plus 3b minus uh, c has to equal the 0 vector, all right, which is the 2 by 2 uh, matrix with all zeros in its entries. All right, well, now what does that mean in general? I mean, specifically, well, it means that if I multiply 2 times a and add to that 3 times b, I should get c back. Now, if we could have figured out that c could be written as 2 times a plus 3 times b before we even started this whole conversation and this entire problem, then we could have just concluded that s is linearly dependent, you see? Because that's the definition. That's one of the that's one of the byproducts of the definition of linear dependence. Is that is that the vectors can be written in some one of one of the vectors can be written in in some sort of linear combination of the other vectors. Now, you're never going to be able to see that. So that's why you have to go back to the definition. But just to show you that this is true. I've programmed in as a special treat the uh, the original matrices in the set S, and so I'm going to go and show that this final equation 2a plus 3b 3, uh, 3b actually equals c. So 2 times the matrix A. Again, I've programmed these in already um, from the original problem. Plus, oops. 
3 times b. Okay, and the, and the calculator is going to know that I'm multiplying the scalar times the matrix uh, when I do this. And I'm going to hit enter. Now that should give me back C. And if you go back, I've already programmed C in so we can compare it. Let's just see what C looks like. Sure enough, uh, we do get back C. So as I said before, a lot of students spend time trying to look for the linear combination themselves that would show that one of the vectors in the set is a linear combination of the other vectors in the set. But generally, when we make a test or do problems, we're not going to make it that easy. That's why you actually have to set up an equation like this one to work out the details. Again, you do not have to show me a specific instance uh, of linear dependence of these vectors, but I think it's fun to show you in these problems. You just have to say that S is linearly dependent because I got back constants that would make that equation true that aren't all zeros, this equation true.